Okay, so to start, we're going to revisit our discussion of graphic design principles from session two and see how they apply to data graphics specifically. Um, so if you remember, we learned a fun acronym um, for the four core graphic design principles that we care about in this class. Um, that stands for contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. Um, and this CRAP acronym is kind of a helpful checklist um, that you can go through whenever you see any sort of designed object and you can check to see if it has all of those elements. And if it does and it's working well, then it should be a well-designed um, graphic design or a, a well-designed object. Um, you got experience with that with your second exercise where you got to redesign an ugly poster. Um, and based on the, the assignments they've seen turned in, you did a great job. So good job, everyone. Um, these graphic design principles, as I mentioned throughout session two, are they, they're kind of catchy. Um, once you learn them, anytime you look at any designed object in the world, you should be able to apply these and you'll be able to identify why it looks bad or why it looks good. And it's not just graphic design things. These are somewhat universal. Um, they apply everywhere. They apply to graphic design, but they also apply to art and to music. Um, you need contrasting chords throughout different uh, composed pieces. Um, it applies to architecture. Um, you need good contrasting um, elements on the outside of houses. You need good repetition. You need um, windows to be aligned with each other. Do you, want, you don't want them kind of slightly off from each other on different floors. Um, so these, these principles still apply to all sorts of things. Um, and specifically for our purposes, they also apply to graphs and to graph making um, and communicating um, stories with data. Um, which is why we spent some time in this first week going over these principles because they are foundational to the things that we're going to be making for the rest of the semester here. Um, in your readings, um, I had you look at a couple different blog posts um, debating about this gray background. One of the most contentious things online um, when people talk about ggplot is there are some people who absolutely hate this gray background. Um, and so hopefully in your readings, you saw one of those perspectives, like it's kind of extra chart junk. We don't need that. Um, according to the author of ggplot, he loves this because it adds contrast and it makes it easier to um, read the plot. Um, if it was just a big sea of white, um, it's harder to see some of these points. And so you want to have um, kind of extra contrast to help set off those points and those colors so you can see them a lot better. So if you look at this plot here, it has kind of all the core elements and they're easy to see. Um, and the gray background really does help offset these, these points. And so they're not just lost in a sea of white. Um, and so according to the, the law of contrast here, it does, it does meet the rules of contrast and it does make it easier to read. And so even though people fight about whether or not you should have a gray background, it does add contrast. Um, and so it can be good, it can be bad. Um, there's no official decision, there's no official consensus, uh, it just is. And so often, like even though I do like the gray background in my own work, whenever I um, create figures for presentations or for uh, publications that I make, I rarely use the actual gray background um, in my own stuff. I, I use theme black and white or theme minimal, um, as we'll see um, later today. And so that's fine too. Um, it really doesn't matter what theme you ultimately use as long as you follow the core graphic design principles that we've talked about and as long as um, you follow kind of the main guidelines to make sure everything looks good. So we can apply these same um, contrast repetition alignment proximity, proximity principles to our graphs. Um, the reason I had you look at Klaus Wilkie's chapter on um, plot titles and how to format tables and other things like that is because he outlines lots of the different rules that exist for um, creating good looking graphics and um, applying those core design principles to um, data graphics specifically. And we can apply those same principles to ggplot plots. Um, the easiest way to do that is with themes and lots of people have, have built um, pre-created themes that you can just use and they improve your plots a lot. So if you look back to this gray background, that's kind of a standard ggplot plot. Um, but if you just add a single line to your um, ggplot code, you can create all sorts of things. So if you look at this, there's a package called Harbor Themes here. Um, and if you just add this one line of code here, this theme ipsum ps, um, it will change all of the fonts and get rid of some of the borders and it'll change all sorts of things in the plot to make it look a lot nicer. Um, and so that's just one line of code. Um, there are also other themes within that Harbor Themes package. 
Um, you can make dark backgrounds. Um, there's another package called GG Themes that has a whole bunch of um, kind of replicas from different uh, publications. This is the Economist theme. So if you want to make graphs that look like they come from the Economist, um, you have Theme Economist that you can use. You can even get super artsy. Um, this is a fun theme from GG Pomological. It's a package that you can install. And it includes this theme pomological fancy. And it does this crazy uh, cursive font and it changes the colors to be a lot more muted. And it's, it's based on a whole bunch of uh, fancy fruit artwork that the US government um, um, commissioned a long time ago. And now it's, they're all in the public domain. And so graphic designers have been jumping on these, these fancy pictures of fruit and flowers um, that are now out in the public domain. So you can do all sorts of cool graphic designy things to ggplot. You don't have to live with just that gray background. And the way you do all of this is with one single function. It's this theme function. And so that's what you'll be getting lots of practice with today, um, is doing stuff with the theme function to change elements of your graph.